All right. Right now I want to uh, go over an interesting uh, design that mechanical engineers need to be aware of in the automotive community. CVT transmissions. Uh, OEM manufacturers are using them. Snowmobiles have been using them for years and other ATVs and in FSAE race cars. A lot of um, cars have shown up with uh, CVT. So if you aren't familiar with CVT, I want to give you a quick overview. Basically a CVT is a belt transmission with movable sheaves. This is the driven sheave that would be on the intermediate shaft. See this gap here? Notice spring, notice ramps. This sheave moves. The way the transmission works is, is that the driven sheave set on the front, this, this is the engine, if these are all front when you start out with the radius being small in diameter and the dra driven one, which would be this one, being large in diameter and that gives you a ratio. Usually they start out around three to one, three and a half to one. Now, as the RPM goes up, the front sheave grows in radius, the back sheave diminishes in radius. So eventually it will get to a one to one ratio as it shifts through the ratio ranges. And they will eventually, on some of the models, go into overdrive. That's where the front sheave is larger than the rear sheave and you get an overdrive condition. Here would be one to one. This would be a 0.75 to one overdrive condition. Now, here's the advantage of sheaves uh, type transmissions, CVT transmissions. One, the engine can operate in a very efficient RPM range most of the time. I have a chart to illustrate that. But secondly, it's overall operating efficiently when designed properly, when matched properly with its springs and counterweights so it op it's shifting at the RPM that's proper for the engine can be far more efficient than a normal gear type transmission, especially on motorcycle engine equipped race cars. If you have a normal 600cc motorcycle engine, it will be a six speed. You will also have inside there a gear set from the crankshaft to the transmission input. So you have another gear set. So you have seven pairs of gears turning at all times in oil. The efficiency for turning gear pairs is about, you lose about 2%. So, you can lose 14% of the power developed at the crankshaft by the time it passes through a six-speed motorcycle transmission and makes its way to the output sprocket. With a CVT, here we go. At three to one, the efficiency, okay, so if that's 14, uh, 14%, that'd be 86% efficient, about right here. Now, the CVT transmission, when it starts out in the beginning, it's only at about 80%. And as it shifts going from small to one to one, it moves up. When it's in the two to one to one and a half, almost to uh, one to one, it's above 90%. This is a good solid five to six percent more mechanically efficient than a gear transmission. And if you exploit this, that aids fuel economy and acceleration. In addition, the power flow through a CVT is constant. There's no momentary breaks while you're shifting gears. Uh, even at the drag strip, I know this from drag racing motorcycles, it takes 50 milliseconds minimum to shift a gear. So if you've got to shift six times, that's 300 milliseconds in a, in a run. So that adds up. CVT pulls all the time.
Now, as you can see, its efficiency is excellent, but only when optimized. You have to do your due diligence in the setup and the design. Now, this is how they work in the real world and what you would do to use them. We would take, now this chart I prepared here goes zero to 60 miles an hour. This is actually for one of our cars, our CNG uh, hybrid car. It uses an industrial engine whose torque peak is at 2600, his horsepower peaks at 3600, and the torque horsepower midpoint is 3100. Well, we would get best efficiency running at the torque peak, of course, at 2600, but the horsepower is down. We need more horsepower than the engine can develop at the torque peak to pull the car at the speed we'd like it to go. So we have to crank it up a little bit and move it toward the horsepower peak. So we compromised on 3100 RPM, which is halfway in between. So the CVT on the car is set up to do its shifting, meaning it's going from here to here, moving through its ratios uh, in the, at when it, once it hits 3100 RPM. Now, here's where you would start out. If this was a dead idle, at, uh, here's the RPM chart, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Okay, the engine idles at, let's say, about um, 11, 1,200 RPM. Now the driver adds throttle and it slips, 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 slips till the front sheave goes in and grabs the belt. And then once it has full engagement on the belt, you're operating in this low ratio only, which is three to one or so. Now, it stays in that low ratio until it gets up to the RPM at which the CVT is designed to shift. Notice the little dotted line. There's usually a momentary overshoot and then it drops back into the shift range. So this is the shift speed range up and this is also called back shift range because if you're running in this range and you hit a hill, the engine will stay at the same RPM but the ratio will gear itself down and enable the car to pull the hill. So it will shift up and it shift down until it shifts completely out and you're either in one-to-one -one or you're in maximum overdrive, then the RPM will continue up because the CVT has shifted as far as it can go. But remember, if you shift it out as far as it can go, you're, and it shifts into overdrive, and overdrive, it severely loses efficiency. It's best to operate it between about two-to-one to one-to-one. So if you gear the car properly to operate in that range, CVT is the most efficient transmission design out there for fuel economy and for acceleration. So these are the advantages of a CDT, CVT, excuse me.